Hello and welcome to Stroop Mansion. I'm outside today, obviously, because it is one of the first super nice days of the year. It's actually warm enough to be out here without layers on. As you can see, I have my gardening overalls on and not my work overalls. It has been a long winter. It's still winter. I'm sure we'll still get another snow in here somewhere, but just wanted to come outside and putt around. Maybe I can show you what a nice early spring day outside at Stroop Mansion looks like. I can show you some of the plants that I have that are already starting to sneak up. I want to get a bed ready to plant some seeds in. I'd like to start a fire because that is like a central outside cozy thing for me. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just hang out outside together and see what we can get into. The first thing I want to take care of while I'm out here is these beds that are here behind me. These were actually trash. When we first moved in, there was a lot of trash like behind our garage and there were these big like bins and immediately I was like, oh, those would make a cool planter. I don't know how, but I think they, I would like to plant something in them. I enlisted my dad's help and we ended up building these. Last year, anxious to get started in my gardening for the year while it was still cold out, I decided that I should build like a, a topper lid for them so that I could start some seeds outside but have them still be protected. I've refilmed this like five times trying to tell you about my weird little add-on thing. I'm just gonna go to the garage and grab them and then we can discuss how they work, <laughs> okay? First thing I need to do here is get this cleaned up. I do not clean up any sort of garden materials until the weather is consistently over 50 degrees for like a week straight so that all the little buggies and critters have a chance to wake up because this is like their bedding. But I have to break the rule here because I want to get this started. The reason I'm getting this going is because this is where I'm going to start my marigolds. Last year I started marigolds from seed for the first time ever and it made me a certified marigold freak. My marigolds were so beautiful and I just like, I planted them like just for, just for the fun of it. I like to put them like by my tomatoes and stuff and like, you know, by, by my food garden stuff. They're also, they're, they're pretty, they're fine. But these ones that I grew were so gorgeous. Basically took over a huge chunk of my flower garden. But more than anything, the thing that really sold me on them is their bloom time. They bloomed longer than any other flower in my yard. So this year, I'm going even harder. Normally I would plant a bunch of things between these two small little square beds here, but I'm gonna do marigolds in both of them because I just wanna get them started so that when it gets a little bit warmer, I can move them out everywhere around the yard. I see that there are a ton of marigold seeds still here, even though I harvested like an actual boatload. And I'm, I'm actually not sure if these are still viable since they were outside, but here's the thing. I'm gonna spread them in there anyway, because why not? So let's get this cleaned up. Mm, I smell basil. bunch of onions from last year. I think I'm just gonna set those to the side and then replant them. I can't believe that they're still alive. They smell amazing. Vote that one's gross. A little bit. Now I'm gonna dump this in the compost and go grab some compost. I cleaned those out as best as I could. There's still a bunch of leaves and twirly birds in there. Leaves are not a big deal. Those will decay and be awesome food, but the twirly birds might mean I have a ton of little baby trees popping up. No big deal. It's not hard to thin that out once they start growing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my little contraption thing on here and then we will do seeds.
just so you know i'm a total over seeder this is totally overkill but i harvested so many last year that like i i, I don't know i got them you know this is like one of five bags Just came from the basement. I got my windows. They're filthy, so I'm gonna clean those before we put them in. That's all. Those will stay on there like that until we are past last frost. It doesn't get too hot. Even right now, since it's been a year since I have done this, I feel a little bit like, how does this work? Aren't they gonna overheat? Aren't they gonna burn? But last year they did beautifully. I think that on super hot days, I just made sure to come out here and crack it open. I just put a little stick in the dirt and that holds the window up. And that's something I do when the temperatures start to like level out. That's how I get them used to the nice weather so that they're not shocked by the temperature swing. It's not a gorgeous project, but it gets me outside and gardening much earlier than if I were to be waiting on last frost. And to somebody who just, oh, seasonal depression, my friend, it is rough. I thrive in the sunshine. My favorite place is my garden and just being outside. And even though I don't, I don't do well in the sun, I really, I overheat really easily. It, it just, it feels so good to be out here. Even in like long sleeves, it feels amazing. So I'm just, I'm happy to be out here. I'm so excited to get started on these. I can't wait till the little seedlings start to show. And obviously I will keep you updated on that because when it comes to my flowers, I never shut up about how happy they make me. YouTube, you do not know what you are in for when it comes to gardening, Kayla. On that note, let's go look at some of the stuff that's starting to pop up already. This shot right here, it doesn't look like much right now. But if we look closer, here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. It's all daffodils. I am so excited. All of the ones to this side of me here that are closest to the pond, those were here when we bought the house and those sparked something in me, which just sounds absolutely absurd. But like I said, as somebody who really struggles with winter and being trapped inside and not having sunshine, being able to see these flowers pop up at the very end of January, even though they don't bloom for a couple more months, just to like see that they're, they're, they're coming back is such a, it feels good, it feels so good. That started an obsession and I have not stopped adding daffodils. I was just in the kitchen thinking earlier about how like, I don't, listen, everything regarding this house is expensive. We desperately need a new roof, which is a huge expense. So we don't really have a lot of like, pull, I'm trying to grab a tree, a lot of play money. But like, I think that just like spending a hundred dollars per year on bulbs is worth it in the long run for my mental health um so that's just that's just something i was thinking earlier even though last year i was like oh i'm not gonna need to buy any more bulbs after i do plant these crocus and um now i'm already like well i could get more crocus or more daffodils this will only be exciting to like one person and that's probably me but let's take a closer look at the daffodils because i'm excited Everything on that side is old. Everything on this side of this trail is new as of last year, which means I haven't even seen them bloom yet. I managed to score these, I was gonna call them used bulbs, but I mean, I guess all bulbs are kind of used, but they were going to be thrown away. And this friend managed to save me a huge bag of them. I forget the number, I, I did count as I was planting them because I just felt like, wow, this is like so many. Anyway, 
I have not seen these yet. I don't even know what kind they are. I didn't know if they would take because we had a really, really dry summer and I was not good at watering them. Planted them a little bit late. And on top of all of that, I have a little bit of a squirrel problem. They kept coming over here and digging them up. They weren't eating them or anything. They were just digging the hole up and trying to steal whatever was in there, realizing it was daffodils and then being like, I don't want that. I can't wait to see this path come into bloom. It was magical last year, but I think that this year it is going to take the cake. In other daffodil news, this whole woods line here beside me is daffodils. The very first spring that I lived here, my dad helped me plant a bunch. Since then, I have been adding and adding. This never really grows in quite as thick as I want, but I do think it's still because it is quite new. I planted them in spring of 21, so they will be three years old this year, and they should probably look better than ever this year. So I'm super excited to see those peeking up. This is where I have the most variety. So behind me here, I have snowdrops coming up. And I say coming up, but they are already bloomed. They are my earliest bloomers here. We had a snow maybe like a week ago and that didn't stop them, snowdrops. These I would love to continue adding more to. They're a short bloomer, but they just come up so early that it's so exciting. This is something I absolutely recommend adding to your yard, buy them. The third thing coming up in my yard already are the crocus, which if you recall, I made a whole video about because I wanted to do a, like, a view of my house where the whole front yard is filled with crocus and they're starting to peek their little head up. We did have one little setback though, which was that the city or the county or the township or somebody said, hey, you have some trees that need cut down. We will do it free of charge if you would like um, or else you need to deal with them at a later date and we were like by all means cut down the trees so they did that and then my husband was like hey like can we keep the wood that was all fine and dandy except I was like yeah like just like put the trees anywhere no biggie and of course they ended up getting dumped like on my crocus bulbs which not a huge deal they're safe underground for the winter but the thing is is that there was just so much wood so much tree to cut up that it was a lot more work than we had intended luckily my dad came over the other day and he helped us get a ton of it cut up but there's still some up here hopefully it did not impede the growth too much there were some bulbs underneath the wood like when we moved the wood i found some that were peeking and there's quite a bit of sawdust still left in the yard so the yard is like not the prettiest but I will still show you what we have peeking up just because it's always wild to me how dead my garden can be and then how it just explodes every year just for the sake of that here's what it looks like right now it is quite ugly and it's it really does blow my mind that it can turn into something so gorgeous I can't wait to get out here and work but like I said I am very very adamant about not touching it until the temperatures are warm enough that buggies can wake up because I love bugs. On another garden note here I am so excited about this. So last year we added these bricks to my garden so that I had like a nice little walkway and they were beautiful. They're beautiful but this year they're growing moss. <laughs> I love moss, it's so pretty. I hope that this really like continues to fill in and take over all of the brick parts because that will also save me from weeding it. But I just think that moss and brick is just a mm, delicious combo, I love it, beautiful. I just went to go film the crocus leaves that are starting to pop up in the front yard and breaking news, we have one flower. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous because I wanted them all to pop up at the same time for like, you know, the, the impact that I wanted, but I can't be mad at a flower. So I did not start a fire like I said I might, but I did get to show you a lot of the plants that I'm very excited about. The ones that are starting to peek their little head up. I know I will be a broken record basically all summer long, all garden season, because flowers just make me so happy. They are such an important part of my mental health. And I would love to convince more people to garden and convince more people that they need daffodils and crocus and snowdrops and just all of those early bloomers because they make your heart feel good. Just this little bit of time outside just has me feeling totally refreshed. I had a bad weekend where I just, I did not feel well. And now that I've been outside and I've got the sunshine on me, I feel alive. I'm, I'm ready to do things, ready to be productive. I guess I have to go back inside and work on the closet. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining me. I will see you next time. Goodbye.
on a side note, I'm probably just gonna throw this at the end of the video. I feel like I just keep looking back that way. This way is the woods and it like the wind is blowing in like a weird way where like it blows in like a certain place but not everywhere and it sounds so loud. I think I've just been reading too many horror books lately and like I feel a little freaked out by the woods sometimes even though I'm a grown woman. Is there something back there? 